Nectar 214, uh, as I said, it's a cytokine that is a lead to proliferation of the T cells and infiltration of the T cells into the tumor microenvironment. And when you proliferate, and uh, you, proliferation is considered the first uh, needed uh, step for an active immune response, whether it's against cancer or then against infections. Proliferation is considered the hallmark of an active immune response. Once you proliferate, you also get the T cells activated and you get activation marker. PD1 is one of the activation markers. Obviously, its engagement with its ligand, the PDL1, lead to the exhaustion. But as a phenotype T cells that has a PD1 on the surface, it's a marker of activations. And we noticed from the monotherapy trial, from the on treatment biopsies that we obtained on the patients who received Nectar 214, that the infiltration, the infiltrating T cells into the tumor microenvironment across different cohorts of tumors, uh, notice them they're upregulating their PD1. Uh, and that's led us to the rationale that combining it and support uh, rationale combining it with anti-PD-1 agents will be very helpful. Obviously, the preclinical data also supported the combination and demonstrated the, the synergy. But furthermore, these are completely non-overlapping mechanisms. One, truly lead to the stimulation of the immune cells. And sometimes you can call it a non-specific way. Uh, Anti-PD-1 rescue a most likely a specific T cells that recognize the antigens. So it relies on the immune system to recognize the cancer, and then it comes to play by rescuing the last step of inhibitions. But not necessarily contribute to increasing of those uh, T cells that recognize further antigens. We believe that Nectar 214, based on the preclinical data, allow for enhancement of, of uh, 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 T cell recognitions uh, into the tumor microenvironment and bring more T cells into the tumor microenvironment. And these, as we continue dosing the Nectar 214, you continue to bring more infiltration into the tumor microenvironment. Uh, and that's the hypothetical mechanism that uh, uh, suggests that there might be synergy between those two agents. The PIVOT2 trial is a, a phase one, two study combining Nectar 214 together with nivolumab in patients with solid tumor malignancies. The initial data was uh, as a phase one to identify the recommended phase two. And in the phase one dose escalations, we tested five different doses in different scheduling. And ultimately, we recognized the uh, 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 recommended phase two as Nectar 214, 0.006 milligram per kilogram, and Nivolumab 360 milligram, both giving IV as an outpatient regimen every three weeks. And the initial data from uh, that was presented last year at CITC, we had a very promising uh, uh, responses. You know, we have a 64 percent uh, response in the melanoma cohorts and initially we had a 46 percent uh, response rate into the renal cell carcinoma and only in five patients that we enrolled into the uh, lung cancer we have three out of six patients who are responding what was interesting in nectar 214 combination with nivolumab and that's what we picked up early on that we see activity not only in the pdl1 positive where you really expect single agents nivolumab or single agent anti-PD-1 to do well, but we've seen a, a very good responses and deep responses into the PD-L1 negative, where anti-PD-1 not necessarily doing a, 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 a great job into those patients' populations. And furthermore, the data was presented uh, uh, at this ASCO. We have seen that as the data matures, many patients who were stable disease continue to have a good response and they transform from a stable disease to partial response. And some patients who already were partial responders continue to deepen their response and even including in patients who are PDL1 negative and achieving very deep responders. Same thing with the non-small cell lung cancer and those five patients who all of them were PDL1 negative 
three out of those were responders, and two out of these PDL1 negative responders compared to, to be complete responders. That's that's the encouraging part. Obviously, the data has to be uh, matured more. This is a preliminary safety and efficacy data, so we'll have to see how this data uh, uh, matures and translate into the final form. Uh, but the encouragement and why we call it a promising is because the results that we really see into the PDL1 negative population. And to to further encourage us to see that, we also reported uh, in this meeting about 10 patients of urethelial cancer who uh, had six out of 10 responders, and um, three out of these responders are PDL1 negative. And two out of these uh, three PDL1 negative responders also achieved complete response. I think some of them were unconfirmed complete response. But nonetheless, this patient's populations in urethelial cancer who are PDL1 negative carry poor uh, response rate to single agents immunotherapy. And recently, the FDA alerted us that uh, they stopped enrolling single agents anti PD1. Uh, uh, because it was uh, uh, inferior to a uh, chemotherapy. So that's indicating that these patients are really in uh, uh, unmet need. Uh, when you see responses, this is encouraging. Very early data, very preliminary data, but when you talk about the promise, that is the source of the promise, the deep responses and PDL1 negative. The data was presented at ASCO demonstrated that Nectar 214 in combination with nivolumab achieved the pre-specified efficacy criteria for first-line metastatic melanoma, first-line renal cell carcinoma, and first-line urethelial cancer. So at the moment, I think we, the plan is to go to registrational trial, randomized trials to test the true efficacy, which is the ultimate test to see if these drugs truly demonstrate superiority over single agent and, and under, under standard of care. So in melanoma, the randomized trials will be Nectar 214 plus nivolumab against nivolumab. And if this trial demonstrates superiority, then I think this regimen could be a, the first standard of care. Obviously, we have to wait for this trial to start and mature and see the results.